Michael. She's covering the story for us along with our Elizabeth Schulze. She's out there on the White House North Lawn. We'll take it from both angles. So, of course, Catherine, we want to know what were the documents? What, what was in the documents? And why were they even in President Biden's private office? What do we know? Yeah, Kara, I think those are all the questions that we need answers to here. We know that there were about 10 documents uh, that the lawyers, that lawyers for Biden discovered. And that day, they called the National Archives. The next day, uh, they were turned over. But still lots of questions surrounding what was in these documents? What was the level of classification? What markings did these documents have? Did they have to do with foreign countries? How did they get there in the first place? These are all questions that DOJ has been asking and investigating, if you will, as they've conducted this review uh, that started in November. Now, of course, Biden has said that he doesn't know what was in those documents. His lawyers have advised him uh, not to ask. The House Republicans are demanding a probe, which we reported. Uh, the same Republicans who actually defended former President Trump's alleged mishandling of hundreds of classified records. So let's just explain how this is different. Different in the sense of how this was handled after the fact, right? If we are to take what the White House says at face value here, they notified the federal investigators. They notified the archives immediately. The difference here is how Trump handled this after the fact. There was months of back and forth between Trump's lawyers and the National Archives and the Department of Justice asking for these documents back. And Trump was claiming that he didn't really have to give them back, that they were his. He went to court to claim privilege uh, over them. He had his lawyers certify a statement saying that there was no more classified documents. Uh, documents there at Mar-a-Lago when really it turned out that there was. So those are the big differences here uh, with uh, Trump and Biden. Of course, having classified documents in any setting that isn't uh, behind lock and key is obviously concerning. Democrats and the Senate and the House have asked to be briefed on this. And Elizabeth, you're there at the White House and you'll be covering the briefing today. Do we expect to hear anything more? I mean, the president had a little bit to say yesterday, as we just heard, not knowing what the documents are, but that he is fully in cooperating uh, with the committee here. Uh, what do you think we could get, if anything else, from the briefing today? Well, Kerry, you can expect to hear a lot more questions because there are questions that the White House needs to answer here. Why did we not discover that these documents were disclosed? Why was this not disclosed sooner? You know, we know that these were discovered back in November. Here we are a couple of months later just finding out about this. Why were they discovered by the president's personal lawyers in the first place? Why were the lawyers the one cleaning out that locked office space that President Biden had used when he was in between that time of vice president and president? And one thing we can expect from the White House is to continue to make this message that they are cooperating, not just with the Justice Department in this review, but also fully with the National Archives. They want to make this point that they followed protocol as soon as the documents were discovered by the lawyers. They made the call to the National Archives. They were turned over within one day. The president is really trying to make this point, Kira, that he does not know what's in these files. His lawyers told him not to ask what's in these files. And that's something that we're continuing to hear, that, that every step was taken to make sure that the steps to correct this were made once those documents were found, Kira. Yeah, we definitely want to know what was in the documents for sure. Uh, Catherine, we have to talk about New York Republican George Santos uh, for a moment um, because the Nassau County Republican Party called on him to resign now. Uh, his response is that he's not going anywhere. Yeah, he's been very blunt about this. You saw Rachel Scott and our producer Laylee chasing him uh, around just hours ago here, and he said that he was not resigning at all. He's now tweeted uh, right there that he will not resign. But the big question is, as these revelations continue to surface, what is Republican leadership going to do about this? They haven't totally commented on this, Kira. What they're saying is that, oh, we're going to have to handle this uh, behind closed doors like we do everything else, uh, downplaying it with no calls really up here among Republican leadership for him to resign. And here's that moment we were chasing Santos down. Congressman Santos, will you resign? I will not. Will you step down? I will not. Of course, that's our Rachel Scott there right in front of him. He's not answering. It sort of reminds me of uh, the House floor last week. Uh, he was running from the cameras as well because he's under investigation. Maybe we should just jump a little bit more into uh, why uh, there are people that want him to resign besides making up his resume. 
Yeah, exactly. I think every day more things come to light, whether it's campaign of finance, whether it's fabricating his resume, whether it's where he worked, what he did. Uh, all of this is cascading essentially among Republicans on Capitol Hill. He's not going to be able to avoid these questions, Kira. You played that video, great video of Santos going to his office. He says, Kira, that he will address the media on his own time. Uh, what that means is a bit unclear. Yeah, let's hear it. All right, Catherine Elizabeth, thank you both so much.